Yes. <laughs> oh, we have your email address, John. We have your number. <clears throat> well, good morning. It's great to see the group here. So, for the folks online, I've got about 400 people here in the room with me. <laughs> So uh, Rita was saying, you know, when am I going to quit giving talks at ADG? <laughs> and, 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 you, and you have to understand that my goal in life was always to know a little bit about almost everything. And so there's very few subjects I don't have a big enough ego to think I could actually talk on. Um, the one, okay, the other one is coming up. Okay, right. Um, I will. But... Um, Cybersecurity is something I actually know a little bit about, and, and I've gotten to know a little bit about other kinds of fraud just from working with people uh, the the, the uh, church. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rick Hefner. Um, let's see, I have a career as an engineer, and I design spacecraft and all kinds of things for most of my life. Uh, towards the end of my, my career, I got, um, got interested in other things, and one of the things I really got interested in was cybersecurity. It got to be a very big issue with people hacking our satellites, people hacking our computer systems, our ground systems, you know, planes falling out of the sky, all kinds of, of potential problems. So I was kind of on the industrial side. And, and my current job is I run the professional education uh, group at Caltech. And so we've got a number of, of cybersecurity classes. We're teaching executives and people out in the profession. Um, one of the most interesting times I had a few years ago was I actually went to hacker school. The school to teach you how to hack. There's a school for that. Um, and, and it's a school that, that, that you take if you're what's called a white hat. So a white hat means you're a good guy and you're learning how to be a bad guy so that you can thwart the bad guys from doing all their kind of stuff. What was scary was with about an hour's worth of training, I was able to hack almost anything using some really simple tools that you could buy for about a hundred bucks at any convention of these kind of hackers. Um, and that really got me worried because at one time, fraud was something that was done by, by the mafia, by big gangs, by government rogue nation states. You know, it took a lot of money. It took a lot of expertise, et cetera. These days, Frauds can be done by some ne'er-do-well with a high school education and a, a couple of simple tools. And um, I, want, I told Jim I wanted to talk a little bit about this because so many people in our church have, have been defrauded of money. We have people here uh, who have lost hundreds of dollars. We have people who I, I was able to help one of my friends who almost lost $6,000 in one of these scams. So these are real, they're happening, they're hitting your friends and neighbors, they're hitting um, our elderly especially. And so I want to give you a few ideas um, in terms of what you can do to kind of protect yourself um, because it's something we all have to be aware of. I have almost um, been packed by a few um, of these fraud guys myself. Um, I, I, you think I know better, but they're very slick and I want to show you some of the tools and techniques that they use to get around you. Jim? This is, this is being video recorded. Yes, this is being video recorded. Yes. I want to be online. Um, yeah, so it can be destroyed later. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, I think you have to understand scams come in many shapes and sizes. It used to be we worried about computer security. Um, these days, phone um, scams are much more common because anybody with a phone can do a scam, and almost all have phones. And we're so used to conversing with people on the phone that we let our guard down a lot of times when we pick up the phone. Where, you know, I was younger, we learned phone etiquette, how to be nice to people on the phone. We have this general tendency to be nice. And so we're doing that. Um, it's a huge business. Um, so estimates I've seen are like $23 trillion uh, are lost um, over the last several years in terms of these kind of scams. Um, there's a number of telltale signs. I'm going to give you some specific scams in a few minutes so you kind of know what to look for. But these are general signs that you'd see everywhere. The biggest thing is one of the scammers, things that scammers always do is something's urgent. You've got to do something right away. They're trying to panic you 
to get you to do something before you think about it, before you realize you're being asked to do something that isn't appropriate or something isn't right. So there's always act right away or something really, really bad is gonna happen. Um, and that's it's always an essential part of any kind of, kind of scam. Um, these are all money-making schemes for the, for the scammers, right? And they're always gonna ask for some sort of payment that's not a standard way that you would normally do because they want something that's not traceable and not refundable. So they're gonna ask you to wire money to them, which can't be undone. They're gonna ask you um, to give you some sort of prepaid gift card or something, because once they have the gift card or once they have the number off the gift card and they cash it, it's done. You can't get your money back. Um, you can't cover it. Um, often you'll hear in a scam, they'll give you some sort of request for, for personal information and they'll do it conversationally. Well, you still, at, still live at Elm Street, right? Oh, no, no, I don't live at, at Elm Street. I live at Oak Street. Oh, what's your address there at Oak Street? They want to get as much information, and that helps them endear themselves, and that helps them, them make it sound like they've got more information. There's so much information about I, I could take anybody in this room, and I could go on the web, and really simply, I could find out a lot of information about you, where you went to school, friends, on Facebook, and, et cetera. I could find out where you've worked, all kinds of things, and I'll use that to make it sound like I've got access to all of your information. And the more I get you to give me, the more convincing I can make that story as a scammer. Um, One thing, my, my mom years ago, she was very secret about her age. She somehow, yes. <laughs> she was much younger than my dad who's walking over to us. <laughs> anyway, and they were the same age, they were in the But she was horrified to learn that her age was just, you know, like, oh, well. Yeah. I mean, with plus or minus a couple of years, right? You know, it's just out there. <gasps> <laughs> so, so, so just for the focus online, Bill saying her mom used to be horrified that somebody might know her age, but then knowing that so much stuff, and then we'd all be horrified to know how much information about us is on the web. It's just, and, you know, it's great to think that you can protect that. You're not going to, right? You've got big companies like Amazon and Google and Microsoft, and they are skimming everything and anything you do. You ever wonder why you're, you're searching for India, and the next thing you see is on Amazon starts popping up, you know, guidebooks on India and the travel agents uh, talk about these interviews they're having, et cetera. Um, there, we just live in an information age. There's, it's too easy. Um, one of the other courses we teach is on, on big data, which is just looking at all the information of data that's out there on you. And so it's great to think you can hide your information uh, to tell you you can't. Uh, it's, it's too it's too pervasive. There's things you, you can and should do, and we'll talk about that another time. But, but um, they they want to get more personal information because a lot of times it's just an individual. You know, it's like the guy I showed you in the picture, the guy with a hoodie, his computer, goofing around, right? But they can make a, make a really really good living doing that. Um, often there's some sort of unsolicited or free help. Um, you want a contest. Um, I'm going to help you with a computer problem you're having something that they're trying again to engender your trust. They're trying to get you to trust by and give you something and that and then you let your guard down or you get greedy about getting this free thing that, that you know, right, that we've all heard about the, the uh, Nigerian prince that wants to, wants to somehow tie to his fortune for general reasons just for good people, right? Um, and then also a lot of times, as the scam goes on, if you resist or you start to have problems, you'll see more and more aggressive behavior. People will start to make threats. Um, they'll start to say that, I know where your address is. We can, uh, I was watching a threat recently. They were threatening somebody, said, we know your address. We can come put a bullet in your head anytime we want to. Um, we know where your kids go to school. Um, you know, if you don't cooperate with us, and again, fear is a major weapon, you know, Doing something quickly and fear are the, the main things that they're going to use. So um, let's talk about a few of them. And the one that I think is most pervasive right now is the tech support scam. And tech support scam, typically you get a call or you get something on your computer that says, hi, we're from Microsoft. We're from Google. Um, we're from Dell or HP or whoever might even be the company you got your computer from, right? 
But we've noticed the problem that your computer is causing on the internet, and we want to help you fix that problem before something bad happens. You, you get in trouble, you do something illegal, whatever. They're going to come and help you. Okay, I can't say this any stronger. Anybody that calls you who wants to get on your computer is bad. Okay. If you, if you get a call, if someone reaches out to you, it is 100% all the time a bad guy trying to do something bad to you, okay? Microsoft does not call people. Nobody is checking the web to see that you're causing problems. Nobody gets warned about whether your computer is working or not, <laughs> right? Right. Well, when you buy this, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, 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 so nobody from Bill Gates does not. Bill, Bill Gates is going to give you something. No, Bill Gates is not going to give you something. Right. They're they're, they're capitalizing on somebody that you know that sounds like they're an authority and they're somehow related to the computer and they're gonna do something and because it's these magic boxes, we don't know how they work, we let our guard down. All of those guys are bad guys. John? Yeah, we will, we will. Um, so, so, so what happens is the caller offers to fix a problem for you, right? And what they wanna do is, have you connect up your computer to them. You'll go on, they'll use special software. It's the same kind of software that the good guys use. And they're gonna look at your computer and they'll, they'll work around and they'll fix stuff. Once they connect to your computer, game over. At that point, they're putting malware, bad things, viruses, other things on your computer. You don't see them when they're doing that. Nothing shows up on the screen. It's all behind the, behind the, the, the screen. You can't see anything, but they're putting bad stuff on. They're doing several things. Number one, they're taking every file you've got off of your computer because some of them might have bank information. Some of them might have your social security card. Your taxes might be on there. Other records, lists of your friends, all the people you email. They're going to gather all of that that they can because they can, they can sell that. Um, they can trade it in, et cetera. They're also putting viruses on so your computer will continue to be under their control, okay? Which means that anytime they can look at your computer, anytime they, could, they, could, they can do things to your computer. They have something called a key logger. Even anything you type, they can see everything you type, um, everything thing that you did, any bank, um, passwords you put on, anything that you do on your computer that might be sensitive that you didn't want some complete stranger staring over your shoulder looking at, they're gonna be able to see all of that, okay? Normally what they do is, is they then dis, they say, oh, you've got a big problem. We can fix it, but you have to buy this tool of ours. It's typically a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks. It's small. It's like the gateway drug, right? They're, they're getting a little money from you. They get your credit card. Now they got your credit card. Now they can charge whatever they want to, right? But they'll typically, they'll typically um, have you give it as gift cards. They'll have you wire some money to it. They'll go online and help you with the bank transfer because that's complicated, right? They'll, they'll get you to buy their service. That's the start. And then every couple of weeks, they'll call back and say, oh, well, gee, your problem got worse and now you need the deluxe model and now you need the premium model, right? And every time the dollar amount goes up. And, and if you at some point say, well, I don't want to do that, that's when they get nasty. And at that point, they can just shut down your computer. Then you can't use your computer. When they take over your computer like this, when they shut it down, nine times out of 10, nobody in the universe can recover, right? I had a good friend, lost all of his pictures, lost all of his files, lost all of his everything because he clicked on the wrong thing. He got one of these kind of viruses. That was it. He was out of computer. We just threw his computer in the trash, right? Nothing, nobody could, could, could fix it, right? Sometimes I can go in and fix those kind of things, but they're really difficult. Yeah. Just take it a step further. Um, you have to be careful. If you know you're going to contact, like I, I have an issue with Apple. Yeah. My computer, I did a Google search for uh, Apple computer 
uh, support, and I ended up being one. And yeah. I, they did not get in. I figured out that this was a hack, and I was able to fix that. I don't think they're on there, but to this day, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so, it it's it's difficult. If, by the way, if you think any of this stuff has happened to you that we're talking about today, talk to me afterwards. I'll come over. We'll wipe your computer clean. We'll make sure it's 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 in shape, and we'll we'll get back whatever we can get back. Um. Anyway, um, several people in the the church have been been done by this. It also happens the same way that that Mary says, where where you click on the wrong kind of a link, and boom, all of a sudden. <laughs> website, you open the wrong kind of attachment, right? And all of a sudden, you've got it. Um, sometimes those attachments are forwarded by your friends, right? Anything that's cute, funny, useful, whatever. Hey, I saw this really cute cat video. I wanted to share it with you, okay? All, videos, websites are especially easy to put those viruses on. And once you go to the website, you got it, done, okay? Yes. That's right. That's right. And and it, it, and she's pointing out that that it's it's like a virus and that it spreads. If your friend has it and sends you something, you'll get it. Then all your friends will get it. Getting past it. It's not like it's a big thing that says, oh, you get the virus, be careful, don't pass this to somebody. It's it's all behind the scenes. Okay. So what do you do about the tech support scam? Okay. First of all, if anybody calls you and says I'm from Microsoft, just hang up the phone. Don't need to call them, don't need to report them. They're the, the, they they know about those kind of people, right? Just hang up the phone. Don't talk to them, right? Um, you don't have to be polite. These are these are evil, evil people in my Religious beliefs, there's a special place in hell for those kind of things, right? Um, but uh, just hang up the phone. Um, if be careful when you're clicking, right? Um, don't, don't get too excited about um, going to websites you don't well you shouldn't be going to, right? Um, be careful if you're looking for something free if you're looking for something that you, you know you should be paying for like you should be paying royalties you have to be careful that's a place those sites that are a little bit shady where you're getting something you probably shouldn't really be getting for free like a free book or something often those are places where these kind of things hide out so your your basic computer software your antivirus software and everybody should have both right and if you're not sure you have both call me and i'll double check you right but um that will protect you against the a bulk of this, but the trouble is, is they always invent new things that get around whatever protections we have at the moment. So um, just just be careful. I'm not saying don't use your computer, right? <laughs> we got to use our computer. Most everything you can do is going to be safe, right? But just if you're doing something, and if you want computer support, okay, and someone's going to take over your computer, stop and think, how did I get this person, right? So the, the only two people that you ought to be having, there are only two groups you ought to be having computers, it's a bit like me, you know somebody personally and you know they're a good guy, right? Or, or, you, or at least I have you all fooled. <laughs> if I showed you my hacker outfit, you wouldn't think that. <laughs> but, uh, or um, there, like a tech support group that you went to, like Best Buy or Apple or somebody, but make sure you're calling the, the number that's listed on their website. If I was going to get tech support from Apple, I'd go to apple.com and I'd call the number there. Don't just look around or don't let somebody say, I'm from Apple, here's my, my phone number. Those, those are bad guys and they answer the phone, hi, this is Apple tech support, right? It's not Apple tech support, right? Same thing with links. You click on a link, it look, you know, looks like a legitimate link, but it's really going off to someplace else. You'd only go to the Apple site or the Dell site or whatever you are and click on their links where you know it's a legitimate website. Okay, yeah. you want to mention over, over something to, to look at? I'm, I'm not going to go to that level of it. Okay. You, you're, you're not going to confuse everybody there. I just had a new one. 
Yeah. 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 Y
oh my God, they saw that I'm looking at, you know, kittens and you know, <laughs> no, we're not gonna, and they're not gonna tell anybody and nothing's been logged and nine times out of 10, they're just scaring the heck out of you. Um, how many people heard of, heard of phishing scams? Okay, so a phishing scam means they're trying, they're phishing, they're trying to get something out of you. They're trying to get information, et cetera, right? Um, one of the most common ones is we need to verify your account. Um, you'll often get this as an email, right? Um, there's, a, there's a problem with your bank account. There's a problem with your Microsoft account. There's a problem with your, your Best Buy account, right? Some place where you, you transact. Um, sometimes you get them for you know, places you don't use. Hey, uh, there's a problem with your Bank of America. I don't even have a Bank of America account. How does that work? They're just phishing. They're just throwing some bait in and seeing if you go for it, right? They'll throw out... Uh, 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 a million emails simply for nickels, right? And so two thirds of them don't have a Bank of America account, doesn't make any difference. The third that has says, oh my God, they know I have a Bank of America. This must be from Bank of America, right? And they, it's real simple. All you can do is click this link and, and, and we'll there it. When you click the link, then they ask you for your name, username and password. Now you've given them your username and password for your bank account. As soon as you do that, boom, they're draining your bank account. Right, and, and often they're doing it in the way. Okay. Often uh, they do it what? Often, yep. Often they do it what? Um, they'll drain your bank account. Yeah. yeah. Frank. Put out the, frequently, what is also going on here is an example of spoofing. See on the right, email claims to be from Amazon. Yes. But in fact, it's clearly not. You can determine that, but it's right. to say the spoof is that they're impersonating representing themselves as Amazon. Yeah, so for, for the folks online, Frank's showing that the email looks like it's from somebody, it reads like it. Now, if you're a savvy person, you know, and Bill talked about this, you can hover over their name and you'll see their address. If you're savvy, you, you can see it's not the right kind of an address. But sometimes these companies use routers and other things to send their emails out. So sometimes the address looks goofy and might still be legitimate. Often you can look at the wording and the wording looks kind of awkward, right? It's not grammatically correct English, right? Because these are foreigners often doing this and their English isn't their primary language. So sometimes they struggle with it. Or they say something that your friends wouldn't say. You see this sometimes in an email. I got an email one time from Rita Cook, right? And it said, and the topic was, how's it hanging? <laughs> I've been friends with Rita a long time ago. I don't think she'd say how's it hang to me, right? So I, I knew it was, was bogus, right? But sometimes, and they're using more and more English speakers to do this, right? I didn't respond. Don't click the link, just throw it away. It's not legitimate. If somebody really has a problem, they're gonna send you a letter, right? But, but there's almost never any reason to go verify your account like this. Right. If you were unsure about your account, throw this email away. Go to your account the way you normally go to your account. You know, go. If this is Amazon. I'd go type in Amazon.com. I would log in to the official site and I check. Oh yeah, everything's still fine. I'm I'm good. Right. But but don't don't respond to somebody who wants you to go to their site and log stuff in. It will look exactly like the Amazon site. They'll that they they spoof it. As Frank said, it's. It makes it look exactly like it's the Amazon site with the logos. The emails look legitimate. It's very easy for them to take a legitimate email from Amazon and just, just copy that format and it, make it look legit. Yeah. yeah. I'm so used to using a desktop. I don't use my cell phone. But they install malware on your cell phone. Yeah. Everything yeah. you're talking about. If everything I'm saying can apply to your desktop, your laptop, your, your cell phone, your Mac, your PC your Unix machine, <laughs> whatever you got, they can do, they can all do this because it's all human stuff. It's not, they're not, most of them are not using the, the, the computer parts of it as well. Now, most of the time they're gonna hit common things that we all use just because it's, it's numbers. They want to, and they can do landlines too. And we're gonna talk about fishing schemes for landlines too. Voice fishing, fishing. Okay. Um, here's another one. You get an email that says, hey, we've got something, your refund's here, or this, we have information about, you know, that your inheritance or whatever, 
something, information about your tax return, um, please open this and, and respond you know, immediately, right? They, what they want you to do is click on the attachment, okay? Be very suspicious of attachments. Um, I don't know if you can see the details of this one here, but there's two attachments here. One's a, a, a Word document or looks like a Word document. I don't know if it's a Word document or not. It might look like a Word document, but it's easy to make something else look like it. I can put a big virus file, make it look like a Word document. The other thing is a .htm link, which looks like it might be a website. And, and again, when you go to a bad website, you instantly get a box. So clicking on something that has you open up a website is always bad. The big thing is, again, just throw it away, right? You can't get it from the fact that they sent it to you. If you don't click on the link, you don't open the attachment, you'll be fine. If you open the attachment, you got it, okay? So just throw it away. Um, you should only be opening attachments that you're expecting from somebody that you know. So if your Aunt Joyce says, hey, I'm gonna send you pictures of the graduation, then fine, you would expect to see pictures of the graduation come from, okay? If somebody is sending you something uh, uh, unsolicited, okay, um, your friend says, hey, I just thought you might wanna see this picture of my, my new back porch, right? It might be worth a call to say, you know, phone call to them and say, hey, you know, Susie, are you, you really sending me pictures of your back porch you just send me? Um, because then you, you know, you have a little, little more safety, it's probably from them, right? So we pass a lot of, of things back and forth to each other, we send links to each other, et cetera, that happens. You just have to be careful to make sure it's really them that's sending you the link. And a, a phone call never hurts, right? Nothing is so urgent that you have to do it. Okay, um, how many people have gotten a request to friend somebody on Facebook that you thought you're already with friends for? Okay, these are bad guys. It, it, it's really nefarious. What they wanna do is they want you to friend them, really not your friend. It, it has a picture that looks like your friend because they stole it off your friend's Facebook page. You may go to that Facebook page and there may be a lot of pictures because they can steal everything off your friend's book page and they can make their page look exactly like your friend's page, but it's really somebody else, okay? Once they get you, then they get your friends list and then they send all your friends a request posing as you and on and on and on and they just extend that out. What they wanna do is they wanna get a bunch of people who, who, who you think it's your friend and then at some point they send you, hey, there's this link I knew you would like because you're really into gardening. And so this is a cool gardening site you're like. Okay, how do they know you're into gardening? Well, they were on your Facebook page. They could see what you were into gardening, right? Again, they gather so much personal information from you. They make it sound like your friend, unless they say, how's it hanging, right? <laughs> right? Um, so go on there, take a look. Um, be very, very careful on friends. So don't friend these people. Just don't friend, don't check them out. Just throw it away, right? Or call your friend and say, hey, are you trying to friend me, right? Um, if they're already friending you, they don't need to friend you a second time. So that's almost surely a bad person, okay? Um, if you looked at your current friends now, I bet you a dollar donuts, most people in this room would have a bunch of bogus friends. You might look on your friends list and see if you've got two friends with the same name, right? Because that means one of them is bogus. Um, Facebook's trying to hard to get these people off. They're pretty responsive. Um, if you're if you're skilled on the computer and you know it's something's a fake account, you can go to this address I've given you, and there's a way to report them, and they they investigate it and take those people off within a, within a day or two. Um, um, but but you do that. By the way, um, I'll, I'll talk to the guys a second. So no really cute, hot, smoking girl wants to friend you. <laughs> I hate to say you this, right? If you see a girl that's way, way above your station <laughs> and, and she wants to friend you, <laughs> and she's 30 years younger and her outfit's really hot, <laughs> okay? she, she didn't just find you, right? <laughs> This, this, is, this is some 
30 year old trucker you know, <laughs> in his basement, you know, just getting ready to scam you. Um, so just, yeah, let, let your ego, put your ego aside a second and say this, I'm, I can either be incredibly hot or so I'm attracting complete strangers who are hot or maybe this is a bad person. <laughs> yeah, Jan. Why do we have friend meets? Well, we like to have Facebook. We like to have friends on Facebook so they can see what we're eating in, in Idaho that week and stuff. But um, but you'll get friends requests from sometimes from new people that are there. It just it's just an easy way to get scammed. So just be careful. Anytime I get a friend request, my guard goes up, right? And I go look at my Facebook page and say, gosh, I thought I already, already was friends with Bill. Oh yeah, I already am. That means this must be bogus, okay? Um, for those of you who are more sophisticated, there's ways to tell that they're bogus. There's things you can do. The easy thing is just to check and see if you're already friends with them. And if you're not friends with them, call them and say, hey, Susie, you're trying to be my Facebook friend. Did you send me a request? Um, also, you can see the, 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 the links here. Sometimes people send you these requests. You see them on Messenger also, if you're a Messenger person. You see these requests. And they're, they're odd kind of greetings. Your friends would, would say something kind of polite to you, like, hi, I'd like to friend you, or something like that, right? These people go, hi, how's it going? Or, hey, what's up? Or, you know, something like that. Something that your friend wouldn't say to you, right? That's another good giveaway that, that this is probably not, not really your friend. Okay. All right, so many scams. Am I scaring you yet? Okay, I want you to, I want you to be a little scared. I want you to be a little bit protective so that when they try to panic you, you stop and think, hey, wait a minute, this sounds like something Rick was telling me about, okay? Um, grandparent scam, oh my God, what an evil scam. Um, so this is what's called vishing or voice phishing. They do this by phone, right? Everybody has a phone, right? You get a call from, from some relative of yours, often your grandchild. And they say, you know, hi, grandpa. I'm in trouble, I need help, right? And you go, Jason, is that you? Yes, grandpa, it's Jason. I'm, I'm stuck in this foreign country and, and they want money or they, they're gonna hurt me. And I, you know, can you help me? Don't tell mom and dad that they'd be really mad, right? This person is just fishing around to try to get you to reveal that you just told them that they were Jason. They didn't say they were Jason, right? Sometimes or they may- Right. Sometimes it's the third party calling. Hey, listen, we have your, your son here in the Tijuana jail, um, your grandson. Um, it's often far enough away from your relatives that maybe you're not sure where your grandson is right now, right? Rick? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've had a couple of those, and I always say, uh, well, my grandson's name is uh, Colby, and so I'll say, Ralph, are you hurt? Are you okay? And the guy will say, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... So, so you can you can get drawn into them. Um, you can do something like that. You can ask them to say something. To, listen, if this is really Jason, tell me our, our pet's name, right? Tell me the, the first place I took you fishing, right? Something that only your grandson would name. Make sure it's something that they wouldn't put on their Facebook page because this person's probably already looked at your grandson's Facebook page and he's gathered lots of information about Jason. So he knows he goes to school, he goes to, he knows who his friends are. I'm here with, with Sally and, and, and Mary. You know, you met those them before, right? My friends from school. They're gonna do a lot of stuff there that sounds like that. Okay, here's the telltale thing. If your grandson really got into trouble like that, money is probably not gonna fix their problem, right? Someone gets thrown into a jail in a foreign country, you know, Bribing the officials is probably not your way out of it, right? Um, so um, just be just be careful. These are all scams. These are I I hate these because they're preying on our love for our children and grandchildren, etc. But but especially older folks. Again, right? Oh my God, my grandson! I can't I can't stand if I if I can save them by five hundred dollars in gift cards. Why wouldn't I do that, right? Right. But again, it's it's not going to be you know, wire something to the, the, the Iowa State Police Department. It's gonna be, 
oh, put a bunch of, go get a bunch of gift cards and put them in the mail to us, or can you read me the numbers, or, you know, and by the way, you got to do it right away. If we don't do it within two hours, we're, your, your son's going to go up before the magistrate, and then we'll never get him out of jail. Something. Okay. Fishing, fishing schemes, all kinds of variants of this, this voice fishing. Um, one of the variants is the agency impersonation scam. Okay. I mean, we've probably gotten these. I'm getting one of these a week now, too. Hi, we're from the IRS, and, and there's been a problem. We're from the FBI. There's a warrant out for your arrest, right? You need to call us immediately. Um, since I don't answer my phone a lot, a lot of times these are on my answering service. Sometimes I get, I get cynical. I say, sure, come and get me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, exactly. Uh, um, sometimes, too, the, the latest thing is that they're computerized voices. That's because they're yeah. foreign people. And if you heard their, their Chinese accent, you would know that they're not from Iowa, <laughs> you know, uh, or they're not from the FBI or whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's the, the computerized voice that sounds really weird, right? Um, they'll provide bogus information. It's warrant number 23497C, you know, it was issued by, you know, judge, blah, blah, blah. You know, do a lot of that stuff to make it sound very, very official. But it, again, it's a, it's a type of a phishing scam. What they're trying to do is get, gauge you on the phone, have you send them gift cards, have you wire them money, get on your computer or something. Again, they're just trying to scam you. If, if you're under arrest, the FBI does not call you and tell you you're under arrest. <laughs> if the FBI is calling you, you have bigger problems than, than this, <laughs> right? Right. Um, somebody's gonna gonna come grab you if you're if you've done something bad, and probably it's not gonna get to that level before you have lots of chances. Well, there's, there's an interesting uh, legitimate request, and I've been contacted to interview regarding one of my neighbors undergoing the security. Clearance. Yes. Yes. So so that's a good so it's a good question. They're asking permission to you know send a name agent to your door. Does it have a badge? That's right. This is an unexpected call. So, so Frank's, Frank's, Frank's pointing out that you that, that one of the legitimate requests you get is for people that are doing background security investigations, because we live in an area where there are a lot of defense contractors. I had defense clearances for many years. They would go around to my friends to see if I was who I said I was. Am I running drugs out of my basement? Am I running up a lifestyle of bills that I need to pay unless I get money someplace or something, right? If that happens, somebody might call and say, I want to come interview you about Rick, right? And, and so if you do those, those are fine. And, and we need to talk about because we need to support our friends who are getting clearances. But recognize an agent's going to show up at your door time that you want. They're going to present a, uh, an ID that has their picture and information like an ID. And they're not going to try to say anything except ask you questions about the person, right? And the kind of questions they ask you is, they say they live at this address. Do they actually live at that address? They say they've been going to this church for 10 years. Have they been going to this church for 10 years? Um, do you know um, whether they have any foreign contacts? Do you know if they're, they're part of any groups that want to overthrow the government? You know, they're asking you those kinds of questions. It's basically, is this a good person? Is this person who they say they are? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we have all gotten, I've done probably two dozen of those interviews for friends oh, and colleagues. You know, when that happens, they don't just, they don't just pick a random person. I mean, the person who's being, who's getting the investigation says, here are people you may contact. So if they're so, so, so there's bills that right so normally if, if if i'm being investigated i will give them a list of people that i will talk to and i'll call you and say hey rob you know you may get a call from an agency that that, that wants to come interview you and 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 please don't talk about that time in cabo you know <laughs> no <laughs> but but sometimes too they'll talk to those people about other people because they want to get one step away so you'll also they also have people that maybe you maybe get a call for that that you didn't do those are legitimate but but they're never going to do those over the phone those are going to come to your house and they're not going to talk any kind of money they're just going to talk about this person and where this person is who they say they are so that that's pretty safe if at any point you're talking to anybody though and you get into questions that are uncomfortable you don't have to answer anything you can just stop. 
right? Hey, I don't like where this is going. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Right? So just remember, you're in control of, control of what information you give away. Okay, um, another one, this has hit some people in the church, it's called an advanced fee fraud. Um, you get a call and you've won something, or you have an inheritance, or there's been a special um, uh, gov government stimulus check or something, and all we need you to do is cover the handling fees, right? And since the check is $50,000, we're only asking $500. That should be easy, right? Give us the 500, we'll give you the $50,000. I've got a picture of the check right here, right? Um, it's, it's preying on our greed, right? We think somehow we're the magic ones that won the sweepstakes that we never did. Or somehow the Nigerian prince found us and realizes how deserving we are of this option, <laughs> right? Sometimes the amounts are so ridiculous that you kind of know it's bad. You're probably not going to get you know, $10 million from the Nigerian prince. Sorry, you know, random people don't call. And typically, if you have relatives that have money that are going to leave it to you, you, you know about that way in advance, right? Um, and the government doesn't have people calling to figure out how to give out stimulus checks. They can do that just fine on their own. Thank you, right? Um, often, one of the giveaways is they want the fees sent by gift cards. Why do they use gift cards? Because once they have the gift card number, they drain the card. It can't be traced, it can't be reversed, okay? Never, never, never pay something by gift card to, to somebody who just wants a fee, unless you're at that store using their gift card, right? If you have a Best Buy gift card, you're using it at Best Buy, great. Other than that, don't use, best, don't use gift cards to pay for things, right? You wanna say you send your, your grandchildren a, a gift card for graduation, that's fine, right? But don't, don't pay for something with a gift card, okay? Um, people at the gift card stores even try to talk you out of that typically because they, they know this is a very, very common scam because it's, a, it's, a, it's an untraceable way to, to take money from you, okay? Um, and they'll have you read the gift card number to them on the phone because once they read it to you, boom, they drain the money out of it, it's gone. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna close with a few general rules about staying safe and a little bit about passwords, et cetera, on the internet. And then, and then uh, when I go up to choir, you guys could have other discussions if you want to. Um, so first of all, don't talk with anyone who calls you who don't, don't know, right? Stranger danger. Right? We learned that as children, we should probably remember that. Don't talk to people that you don't know on the phone. If somebody really has a, that's a problem, they'll get, to you, they'll get to you in some other way, right? Um, don't click on attachments or links in emails if you haven't requested any kind of information, right? If I ordered something from Amazon and they, Amazon sends me a response and it has information about what I ordered and I want to track it, that's great because uh, I knew I did it. I started that process. If I didn't start the process, no one's, no one's looking out for me and sending me random things that are going to help me. 99% of those are, are bad guys. Um, Check your credit card and bank statements very carefully. Make sure you know what every charge is on there for. Um, sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes it's TXYZZLP, right? It's only 20 bucks. That's 20 bucks. I probably bought a subscription. No, no, no. Go hunt that down. Call the bank, the credit card company, and ask them to figure out what this transaction is, who's it from, whatever. You know, then you find out, oh, that's my subscription to Outdoor Life. Okay, great. Now I know and I can see that, right? A lot of times what they do is they'll put a small charge on there that they hope you don't see or don't pay attention to. And if you don't, then they follow it up with a big charge. Right? So check, check your bank statements, make sure you know all the money that was, was withdrawn, so John legitimately, you know, make sure you know all the credit cards were there, right? Um, you might even consider using a separate credit card for online transactions. Um, I'm not as keen about this one. I, I don't do that myself. Um, and the reason why is because actually online transactions, when you're paying attention, are actually much safer than using your credit card out in a merchant in physical, right? How many times have we gone to a restaurant and handed our credit card to a complete stranger who's working at minimum wage, <laughs> who got hired yesterday, who might quit tomorrow, and we give them our credit card? right? You're actually seven times more likely 
to have those kind of people steal your money on the credit card than somebody in a legitimate online transaction. But extra layer of security, you use a separate credit card, and then you know this is all my online also, stuff. before the chip cards came along, yeah. they were, there's a restaurant not far from here that, that, that where they were hacked in some way that, that they were scamming, somebody was, was scamming the data. Yeah. As a, as it was, a, there's a really common scam where they were putting a, a device on the front of, of gas stations, especially this one you go to at night. When you put your credit card in, it took your credit card information off of it and then said, oh, this machine out of order. What about ATMs? By ATMs, they did the same thing, right? So again, just look, be aware when you're paying for something. Yeah, this looks legitimate. Check your credit cards. Yeah. I had an incident where I ordered something from DoorDash. Yeah. And then the next day, I get a notice from DoorDash saying they discharged my credit card for a hundred and something That's right. restaurant in San Francisco. That's right. So I immediately called, called the bank and canceled the card. Yep. And, yep. And told them that I had this fraud. But, yeah. You know, I had to blame somebody. I mean, I had to place a legitimate order. That's right. You could place it, but the, the person who took your call at DoorDash or the person who worked there could have could be the bad guy. Well, I got a voicemail from Amazon. I don't have an Amazon. Account. That's right. And, yeah. So it probably was an Amazon, was it? I don't remember. Blah, blah, blah. We, we, we suspected the activity. That's why we, we basically uh, yeah. connected with you. No. This, is, this is a version of that that we're going to help you, right? So we're, we're from your credit card company and we're calling you know, notice they didn't say we're from Visa, we're from your credit card company, right? Because they're just being vague, right? And we're calling you because we see a, 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 what looks like an illegitimate charge, please call our number. And you call their number and they say, oh yes, we, we, we've seen a charge here for, for $1,000. Did you spend $1,000? You didn't? Well, well, read me your card number again. Let's verify that this is correct, uh, right? Okay. Now you, now you got it, right? Be careful when you're giving information. We're used to having conversations, especially if we think we know who we're talking to. So just, just be, be mine, okay? Yes. That's right. If, if, if you do the things I'm saying and you're, you're, you're safer, uh, I don't worry about online banking and I've, I've, but I've had a couple of hacks that I don't know whether they were personal or, or online. So the bottom line is in, your, in the next five years, you're gonna get, you're gonna have some bogus charges. It's just it. So just, just watch it. The nice thing about a credit card is if you have a bogus charge, like Pat said, you can just take it, you get to take it off, right? Some of these other scams, you can't get your money back. What about the can you hack the cloud? Yes. The cloud just, the cloud just um, when we talk about the cloud, we just mean the information's on hardware someplace that we don't know where it is and we don't care. It's just, it's just out there. Um, so the cloud can be hacked also. So the next thing is the, the really, um, I'm just checking to make sure we don't have any stragglers here. Um, the nice thing is that um, the people that could do real damage to you, they would rather spend their time hacking Fort Knox or your bank or something like that. They don't fool with us small potatoes people, right? What I worry about is the little, little individual hacker that has lots of time on their hands. <laughs> um, here's a, number four is kind of interesting. Don't email sensitive information. Don't send your tax records with your social security nom number to your tax account, right? It's very, very easy for them to intercept emails, right? Um, so don't send any, don't, don't put it in the body of your email, don't put it in an attachment. You have to be careful, right? If you notice, if you got a tax advisor, when they send you something, you have to go to some website and download it. That's a safe way to do it, right? But you don't just put an attachment in your email and send it to somebody. Anytime you put an attachment, assume everybody in the universe can look at that, okay? That's why we don't send pictures of our junk. <laughs> <That's not people. laughs> because that can be hacked too, right? Um, don't be in a hurry, slow down. Nothing requires you to do anything right away. 
Okay, you can always think about it. You can always say, I'm not sure. I'd like to call Rick and talk to me about this. Um, I have stopped a lot of frauds by people who called me and said, Rick, I got this call. They want to do this. Does that sound right? No, 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 no. Don't talk to them. When they call, hang up, right? Um, so always call me. We can have a, a two-minute chat about it. And, and I, I know a thousand variants of these, and we can, we can help you with those. So just don't let them panic you. Don't let them. You don't, you don't have to do anything right away. I want to sleep on it. Rick, um, sometimes when I'm reading the news, um, all these little blurbs come up with these little spicy things that you might want to read, like, yeah. well, what's, what's really the truth behind Britney Spears? Or yeah, something exactly. important like that, you know? And there might be about 12 of them. Are those just fishing things or are those legit? But most of those are legit. It's called clickbait. Yeah. Click on the you on the cure for the cancer, the way to lose 50 pounds fast, or you know, six ways your cat is trying to kill you or something. Yeah. <laughs> right? um, um, most of those are just kind of low grade get rich snake oil salesmen. You know, they're trying to get you to buy their vitamin product or their their have your pet laminated or whatever they want to do. <laughs> um, so most of those are are not bogus things because because they because they, if they're showing up on on legitimate sites like you'll see those on google you'll see those sometimes on on um amazon and other sites that those are those are quote legitimate but they're usually snake oil right? uh -huh. with some vegetable that you could lose 50 pounds overnight with it there, there'd be there'd be articles in the new york times about it. <laughs> so um it's called clickbait or they're kind of Okay. Um, consider buying some identity protection. Um, there's some fairly cheap systems out there. I put just three out that I know about LifeLock. Um, AAA has a program. There's actually some free stuff you get if you're a AAA member and you can buy some extra stuff. Um, Costco has a, a pretty good package called identity protection. Um, these just add another layer of protection. So you are scammed or, and they're also doing things to like look to see if you're, um, if your social security number shows up on on a place it shouldn't be, you know, in some list that shouldn't be out there. Um, there's a place called the dark web. Have you heard about the dark web? Dark web is like a secondary internet and it's where the bad guys hang out and transfer information, et cetera. Um, and um, it's kind of an underground uh, digital communication things. And, and that's where they buy and sell things like your personal information. And so, those companies will monitor the dark web. Um, they'll, they'll go in as white hats, posing as black hats, and look for your stuff. So I've got um, the AAA one. Um, you don't necessarily have to buy the top one. Look and see what they get, or, or ask me, and I'll help you pick out one that'll suit you. But for a few bucks a year, you can you can fix it. What? Norton is an antivirus. Um, Norton doesn't do anything about identity protection. Um, if you buy LifeLock, they often give you Norton for free. Yes. Um, I, my, I've been in several data breaches. So yep. My, my information is out. Yes. I never did anything okay. So if you're in a data breach, data breach means your information that was held by some business, that business got hacked and your information got let out. So for example, Target got hacked a few years ago and all the information that Target has on you, right? Your name, your your address, your phone number, your target credit card information, probably a few other things, right? All got released to the bad guys, right? Um, so normally in a data breach, the company will offer you a free identity protection service to go check and make sure that your stuff isn't out there on the web. And they'll usually give you three months free or something like that. That's normally part of a court settlement. Um, it, if they don't offer you that, and you, and you were told of a data breach, you should be checking your credit card statements and stuff very carefully just to make sure. And recognize a lot of times they don't know there's been a data breach. They, their data might be hacked and they wouldn't, you know, a good bad guy goes in, looks at all the stuff and, and, and leaves. It doesn't disturb anything and nobody knows that they've looked at it because then they can keep scamming it, right? Once they know it's a data breach, people get their 
their defenses up. So you should be looking at your credit cards and bank statements all the time anyway. And right. they can open another credit card that I don't know about. Right, and they can open another credit card. That's, that's one of the things that these identity protections, if somebody opens a credit card, they'll say, hey, someone's trying to open a MasterCard in your name. Is that you? Did you want to do that? And, and maybe you didn't, maybe you weren't doing that. So that means it's a bad guy trying to do that. So those identity protections are pretty good. Um, it's, kind of, it's insurance. So what you hope is you never need it, right? right? My identity protection triggers have never gone off, but I'm pretty careful. Um, I, want, I want to share something quickly about wallets. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> maybe a week ago or something like that, somebody, she was sitting on the porch. Yes. Some car driver. Oh, goodness. Oh, what they got? Yeah. They did not hurt her. Okay. So her, her daughter is basically to her. Hilda's pointing out that we live in a much more lawless well, society. Much better, I know, I know, and much more. Remember when we used to leave our doors unlocked? Yeah. Right. I'm I'm old enough to know that. I'm old enough to know when I could do that. Now, people are. Uh, by the way, the latest scam is people are going around in the middle of the night. If your car sits out, they're taking your catalytic converter. Oh. There are some precious metals in the catalytic converter. They can steal your catalytic converter to get about 50 bucks of precious metals out of it. It'll cost you about 300 bucks to get a new catalytic converter and get it installed. So if you can put your car inside, put it inside, um, every once in a while Manhattan Beach um, has a thing where they'll engrave your catalytic converter with a with a so with your with your number or your information, something, right? That doesn't keep it from getting stolen, but hopefully it they find some of the bad guys. Um, it's so rampant, though, there are, are places now where they just find the guys and they just let them go because they can't even get them, get them prosecuted fast enough. We're, we could have a long talk about what we should be prosecuting and not prosecuting, but I'll leave that for another discussion. Rob? Is it, uh, you're talking about draining your checking account. Yeah. Is it dangerous to have too much cash in the checking account? Yeah. Should you think it put it in the savings account? Which is right under yeah, I would, I would, it, save me, let's see. They can drain your savings account or your checking account if they get a hold of your bank information. They can change the one. You want to be in an FDIC, federally insured account, because there's usually those kind of protections on it. And then I think it's always good to kind of have your money spread a lot of places. So, you know, for a little under the mattress, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> but but um, I like, I, I don't like to have all my money in one spot because if they hack that spot, there's a, there's a problem. I would rather have it spread a couple of places. 401ks. 401ks. 401ks are relatively safe. Okay. So um, there are been places though where the, the fiduciary institutions that hold the 401ks have been hacked. But when that happens, they're usually liable for that and they'll, they'll, make, they'll make good on it. Yeah. Um, you were mentioned several screens back, the, uh, and I think they have spotted lots of these things, I think. Yeah. But um, the screen that freezes, and you, you seem to be powerless and just call this number immediately, blah, blah, blah. That, yes. If you, because that's the one that scares me, because it just happens. Yeah. And it's only happened twice. And both times, I just turn off the power immediately. That works. Do they have anything at that point? Probably not. It, it, it used to be that that was a sign of a virus. But now that they've, they've the low-grade hackers have found a way to make it look like you have the virus. So, so turn off your, turning off your computer, turning it back on, if it goes away, that means it was just, just one of those, those pretenders. So right. I, I can't understand why they was a so cool. You can't understand why there's why there's people that want to be bad guys as a career. <laughs> we'll, we'll have another discussion about that. That's a that's a morality discussion. Jan, how often do you change your password? I don't actually think we're going to talk about passwords in the next screen. Um, I actually don't think you need to change your password very often, um, unless somebody actually hacks you. There's really there's really no way. We used to think that was a good way to kind of protect stuff. I don't ever change my passwords, um, and I don't I don't have a problem, right? Um, you can if it makes you feel better, but I 
it's a nuisance. I, of course, I have 300 passwords, so that <laughs> may be part of my idea too. Plus, plus, yeah, remember. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the trick for that. Okay. Let's talk about that. All right. Um, yep, I see it. Um, so tips for computer passwords. This is my last slide. Um, do not use the same password for, for all accounts, right? Why? Because if somebody steals one, they've stolen all, right? Someone steals your Amazon account, which might be pretty easy to steal. Now they've got your bank account password, right? And they'll, and they'll go to every place that you could have information and they'll try that password, okay? Don't write your passwords down, okay? I know every person in this room has a list of their passwords someplace, right? Okay, recognize that if I walk into your house, I'm going to look as a bad guy. If I break in your house when you're away for the weekend, I'm going to look around your computer and I'm going to try to find your, your passwords. And if I find that little post-it note or that, that book that you put in the bottom drawer, because I would never look in the bottom drawer, <laughs> right? What am I going to do? Am I going to take the book? No, I'm going to take a picture of the book. Now I can go back to my house and I can hack you all I want to while you're quietly thinking that everything is fine and perfectly, right? The really good bad guys don't leave a trace. They don't show you that they've come got your information, right? Um, don't write your passwords down on your computer. If I can hack your computer, I got your passwords, right? How many people write our passwords down on their computer and then have no password on the computer? <laughs> Which means all I gotta do is start your computer. I'll look around and you've cleverly hidden your password files your password file in a file called passwords, right? Right, and now I, now I can see them all. Okay, so that means you need something that helps your memory. And my memory's going too, guys. So you need a trick. I'm gonna show you the trick that, that professionals use. So first of all, pick a phrase that's meaningful to you. I'm gonna use the phrase, I am a happy camper, right? And so my password's gonna have in it the, the initials for that phrase, I-A-A-H-C. Okay, now I'm gonna pick a character like ampersand or pound sign or a dollar sign or something and a number. Why? Because when I add a, a character and a, and a number to the passwords, they get much harder to crack. Okay, so in this example, I'm gonna pick the, the, the at sign and I'm gonna pick the number three and I'm gonna put the at sign on the front and the three on the back, okay? Now I've got a core password, okay? Now, every time I go to a new site, I'm gonna pick up two letters off the new site. So amazon.com, I'm gonna pick up the A from Amazon, the N from the end of Amazon. I'm gonna put the A on the front and put the N on the end of my password. So my am, uh, amazon.com password is gonna be A at sign X, uh, uh, I A A H C three N, N for the last letter of Amazon, right? My password for Google is gonna be G ampersand I H C three E for the E on Google, right? Now I've got a different password for every website. No one's gonna be able to figure out one password from another because I got all this other goofy stuff in there, right? And so now I've got a set of passwords that I can always remember for any website, I know what my password is and I don't have to write it down, okay? Don't pick, I am a happy camper, pick, pick something. <laughs> when you wish upon a star, <laughs> Rick is the smartest person I know, whatever, whatever meaningful things comes for you, pick that. Yeah, Rob. Uh, Tom Satan's, I think it's Google, the right hand top comes up to show me the savings password. You can do that if, as long as you have a password on your computer, right? Because if you can get on your computer and then I just go to the Google site and it just gives me automatically my password, then, then that's no good, right? But if you put a normal password on your computer, that password you put when you first log on your computer, that's actually a pretty safe mechanism. That's actually pretty, pretty highly encrypted. So if you have a good password for there, and I don't mean the word password uh -huh. or the word password with a zero for the O, yeah. right? Or password six, because they'd never think of that, right? 
If you have a good solid main password for your computer, I use my main, the, the, the second one up there, I use that my main one like that for my computer password, right? If you have a good password, then you can have a password keeper program on your computer, or you can use the websites where you automatically log in. Browsers nowadays, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, et cetera, Safari will offer to keep your passwords. That, that's all safe if your computer itself has a password. So everybody should have a password on their, on their computer. So don't just go no password, put that on your computer. Okay. Everybody should have antivirus. Everybody should have a firewall. If you're not sure you have any of these, call me, I'll come do a little security check on your computer and make sure. After all of that, could the bad guys still hack it? A really sophisticated one could still hack it. But again, those people are, are trying to get into the banks. They're not trying to get in and look at your cousin Dolores's pictures. Right. Jan. It, it's, it's a numbers game. They pick everybody. They, they start with everybody. So they start with 100,000 people, 50,000 people respond back to them, 25%, you know, half of those look good. They just keep doing it. And if they start with a big enough group, then eventually they'll find a few people they can actually have. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Two things. Last, at our last session, someone, Talked about the this is a list of uh, further reading and viewing. I've forgotten why or what. There are copies. Does anybody recall that? All right. The second thing is, and we'll deal with this next time, not not tonight, not today. Um, but all, all the past presentations are available online. I will explain how to do that next time. So um, I've got the routine here. Do we anything home to say a prayer or? We normally say a prayer. We normally hold hands and say a prayer. Okay. Sure. Can we extend here? Heavenly Father, we thank you. For bringing us together. Um, we thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for all the information. We ask you to guide over, keep us, keep us safe from all the bad guys, and help us to grow ever stronger in our love for you. Amen. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. I it just Really amazing. How did you feed him? <laughs>